Hello friends, this video on work energy and power part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 9 before going ahead with part 10. We will now study conservative and non-conservative forces. What is a conservative force? Force with the property that the work done in moving a particle between two points is independent of the path taken. So this is the most important point. If I say conservative force, that means, the let us suppose we have a particle. We move the particle from point A to point B. Now, whatever path we are following to take this particle from A to B, the work done in taking the particle from A to B will be independent of the nature of the path between these two points. That means, so that force which is associated with these kind of work, that is called a conservative force. Examples of conservative forces, gravity, elastic forces, electric forces, because if you see in case of gravity, the force of gravity exists between any two objects. Right? But it doesn't depend upon the work done between these two objects follows which path. It is independent of the path between the two objects. Similarly, the elastic forces or the electric forces which operates between different charged particles. That is also independent of the path between any two points. On the other hand, when I talk of non-conservative force, it is a force with the property that the work done in moving a particle between two points depends on the path taken. That means if you follow one path, the force will be something. If you follow some other path, the force will be different. Now, example of non-conservative force is friction. Friction is, would be the best example of non-conservative force. Let us now study conservation of mechanical energy for conservative forces. Just we already know that conservative forces are those forces in which the work done between the initial point and the final point is independent of the path followed between the two points. Now what is mechanical energy? Kinetic energy and potential energy together is known as mechanical energy. When I say mechanical energy, I mean to say kinetic plus potential energy. Till now we have discussed what is kinetic energy, how do we calculate kinetic energy, what is potential energy, how do we calculate potential energy. So I think it is the best time when we can discuss the topic on conservation of mechanical energy. When I say conservation, what I mean? When I say conservation, I mean to say that the total mechanical energy in a system will always remain constant. That means total mechanical energy in a system will always remain constant no matter what. Maybe some of the kinetic energy will get converted to potential energy, potential energy getting converted to kinetic energy or things like that. But then the total mechanical energy at any point of time will always remain constant. Now here what we'll do, I'll just prove that whatever I am saying is correct. So here we will prove that the total mechanical energy remains constant. Okay, now according to the work energy theorem, we studied work energy theorem, right? W-E theorem. So what did we study in work energy theorem? We studied that change in kinetic energy is equal to work done. Now what is work done? Work done is nothing but force into displacement. Now let us suppose we consider that the force is a variable force. So it will be F of X into delta X. Right? If delta x is the displacement. Now also, we know that the relation, we know the relation between work and potential energy. The change in potential energy is equal to the negative of work done. Correct? So this we can write minus of fx delta x. So from this is equation number 1, this is equation number 2. So what do we get from 1 and 2? Let us suppose we add equation 1 with 2. So what do we get from left hand side? Delta K plus delta V. And from right hand side we get F of X delta X minus 
f of x delta x. So this is equal to 0. So we get delta of a plus v is equal to 0. That means the change in kinetic plus potential energy is equal to 0. Now what is kinetic plus potential energy? Kinetic plus potential energy is mechanical energy. So the change in mechanical energy is equal to 0. Change in something is equal to 0. What does that mean? That means that something is not changing at all. Change in mechanical energy is 0 means that the mechanical energy is not changing. That means the mechanical energy is remaining constant and that is what we wanted to prove. Right? So what did we see? We saw from work energy theorem we know that change in kinetic energy is work done. Also we know that change, is potential, change in potential energy is equal to minus of work done. Now we added both the equations and we found that the change in mechanical energy is equal to zero. That is the total mechanical energy in a system is constant. Now let us look at certain important points to be noted regarding all that we have studied so far. Please note that not all forces are conservative. We already discussed there are two categories of forces. One is conservative and the other one is non-conservative. So conservative forces, I'll quickly review. Conservative forces are those forces which are associated, which results in a work done, which does not depend on the path between initial and final points. Whereas non-conservative forces results in a work done which depends on the path followed between initial and final points. So not here in this chapter we talked mostly about, not mostly, in fact we talked only about the conservative forces. Right? But there are forces which are not conservative. Examples of non-conservative forces are friction. Friction is an example of a non-conservative force. The second thing is zero of potential energy is arbitrary. What do we mean by zero of potential energy? You would have observed that while solving questions, while deriving uh, concepts, we assumed that let us suppose that the value of potential, we, we already told that the potential energy V is a function of H. H is height. Height or many of us also denoted by X that is displacement. So the potential energy is a function of H. Now this V of H is taken at zero. It all depends on the convention we take. Many a times we assume that V of H is equal to 0 at H is equal to 0. So that is just a convention. We assume that here H is equal to 0, so V of H is equal to 0. For example, I will give you certain examples which we have taken before. We always assumed that on Earth's surface, potential energy is equal to 0, right? Why did we assume that? Because we considered that height is equal to 0 on the earth's surface. Why did we say that height is equal to 0 on the earth's surface? Because we considered the earth's surface as the reference. Because there is no standard fact that you have to take this surface as the reference. So it is completely arbitrary. It is completely up to you which reference you take. Similarly, while we were discussing the energy, mechanical energy and potential energy for spring, in case of the spring, we considered that the equilibrium position, we considered that at equilibrium position, x is equal to 0, right? In case of a spring, what we considered? We considered that let us suppose this is the equilibrium position, x equal to 0. This is the maximum, x equal to m. This is minus xm. So the body is moving like this. So we assumed that the equilibrium at equilibrium position, x is equal to 0. Therefore, the potential energy is equal to 0 at the equilibrium position, right? So, the 0 of a potential energy completely depends on the convention which we follow. So, it is said that 0 of potential energy is arbitrary. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more.
Thanks once again.